Sunday School friends. We're going to do some science this morning that you can also do at your home later. Be sure you have your parents' permission and adult supervision. I'm going to set it up now so that you can see all the ingredients and see how to get started. So first I'm going to start with a plain glass. And the first thing I'm going to put in it is some vegetable oil. And we will do it a little over halfway. Then I'm going to take just water. And since Pastor Todd is talking about purple, I'm going to put one drop. And then I'm going to put another drop. And I wonder if you can see this. See how pretty that's getting? And I am going to stir it, but I forgot my spoon, so I'm going to stir it with my finger. And now I'm going to pour this purple water on top of the oil. About that much. And you can see how interesting it's looking. And for now, we're just going to set that aside and come back to it later in a few minutes. But first, there's something that I want you always to remember. And that is how much God loves you. And this is some, a picture that you've seen before, and it's one of my favorites. And let's get Jesus' face in there and the face of the children that he loves just as he loves you. God wants to be close to you. I also want you always to love God back. That's what having a relationship with God is all about. Let's see a short video about our relationship with God. Think about your best friend. Don't you want to tell them about that cool thing you saw? Don't you want to tell them what your favorite flavor of bubblegum is? Don't you want to tell them that when you dropped your sunglasses in your soup, it made you frustrated? Don't you want to tell them that you just learned how to play a song on the ukulele, but it hurt your fingers, and so now it hurts a little bit to pick up your toast with your left hand, so you have to pick it up with your right hand, but that means it's harder to draw a picture of a friendly cactus while eating toast? You and your best friend have a relationship. And when you're in a relationship with someone, you want to tell them things, and you want to listen to the things they tell you. It's the same way with God. You can have a relationship with God, too. You matter so much to God. And he wants to hear about all the things. And he has lots of things he wants to tell you. And that's why we pray, so we can have a relationship with God. Pastor Todd and Mrs. Labig have talked to us about two of the things that we can do to have a good relationship with God. We can get closer to God by praying. We can get closer to God by learning from our Bible. And while you are still learning to read some of you and read the Bible for yourself, you can learn about what's in the Bible by listening carefully and by learning Bible verses and Bible stories and by asking questions about them. Remember what Bishop Scholl told us about asking questions. God wants us to ask questions. God can speak to us through our questions. Today, we're going to add a third way to get closer to God and to have a good relationship with God. Now, this one may sound a little crazy at first, but let's see. First, you need to make some room for God. Room in your life and in your day and in your heart and in your mind. Does it sound crazy yet? In the school cafeteria, you can scoot over on the bench to make fruit room for your friend to eat at your table. And when you're lying on the floor in your living room watching TV, you can make room for your brother or your sister to lie there and watch TV with you. How do you make room for God? Well, you're going to need to get something out of the way so you can let God in. One way to do this is to go without something you enjoy for a little while, maybe, you could go 
without watching cartoons on TV, or playing games on the computer, or Nintendo for a little while. Now is it start, starting to sound crazy? Give up Nintendo to have a relationship with God? And what good could going without TV do? Have you ever noticed how much people like eating? Have you ever noticed how much you like eating? Well, I can tell you that the devil has noticed and he wants to keep you away from God. Here comes a Bible story from Matthew chapter four. You can get closer to God right now as you listen to this Bible story about his son, Jesus. Once upon a time, about 2,000 years ago, Jesus went walking alone into the hot, dry desert. He was going to walk there for 40 days and 40 nights, and he didn't take any food or water with him. Today, we call those 40 days Lent. We are in this season of Lent right now in our church. During Lent, we are getting ready for Easter. During Lent, Jesus was getting ready to die on the cross so we could have Easter. Maybe if you close your eyes, you can pretend that you were walking in the desert with Jesus right now during Lent. So back to our Bible story. Suddenly, the wicked devil appeared in the desert and started making fun of Jesus for having no food. The devil teased and tempted Jesus. If you are the son of God, command these desert stones to turn into loaves of bread, loaves of delicious bread for your next meal. You know you want to. But Jesus took the right path when he answered the devil, bread is not all that I need to live. Man does not live by bread alone. I need every word that comes from God's mouth more than I need food. And with that, Jesus turned his back on the devil and walked away. And what do you think was the very next thing Jesus did? He got down on his knees in the desert sand and prayed to his father, God. Jesus was still hungry after having gone without food for so long, but he pushed the devil out of his mind. Jesus was still hearing his stomach growling, but he pushed his hunger out of his mind. He had made room for God. Now Jesus could focus on letting God into his mind and heart instead of thinking about when he was going to eat again. We know that Jesus had a very special relationship with God, didn't he? And remember, you can also have a special relationship with God. As Jesus did in the desert, we could go without some food we really like for a little while, maybe pizza or popcorn or maybe bubble gum. Giving up something you enjoy for a little while to make room for God is called fasting, fasting. Jesus was fasting in the desert. We can also use fasting to get closer to God. This next short video will help us answer the question, what is fasting? Fasting just means you go without something for a little while. God wants to have a relationship with you. It's super important to him. So let's focus on God right now. Oh, your friend wants to talk to you. Oh look, your food is ready. You probably want to play that, right? Focusing on God is difficult when there are distractions. Fasting is when you cut out distractions so you can focus on God. And God wants to focus on you too because you matter so much to him. Have you ever had moments like those? 
as soon as you try to get something done in the video, we, we were getting ready to focus on God. What happens? The phone rings, distracting you from God. Then the microwave beeps, your food is ready. Then remembering your favorite game distracts you some more. What happened to your focus? It's gone. God wants to be closer to you, but oh, those distractions, the things that get in the way. That's why Jesus went into the desert. He had to get away from the distractions, away from the things he enjoyed and the food he enjoyed that could get in his way when he tried to focus on God. Do you think you could do what Jesus did? Could you go without one distraction and try fasting so that you could talk to God instead? You can think about that question. Maybe you will hear God speaking to you through that question if you listen carefully. The next short video will answer some of your questions about how to fast. <laughs> When you're fasting, it means you're cutting something out so you can focus on God. There are lots of ways to fast. You can skip a meal. You can skip screen time. You can skip playing games. And when you skip that thing, fill that time with focusing on God. You can focus on Him by sitting still and listening, or praying, or reading the Bible, or talking with someone about God. God loves it when you give Him your attention. And he wants to focus on you, too, because you matter to him. Now that you have an idea what fasting is all about, let's go back to our science project to see what fasting could do to your relationship with God. You're going to need to use your imaginations. And let's go and see. Imagine that the purple water is you. You're spending the day doing the same things you usually do. Now imagine that this top layer, the oil, is God. You can see the two layers just touching. There is a connection between God and you. God is touching your life every day. And notice the flat place where God and you meet. That flat place is not letting God in to your life. No oil is getting into the purple water. You haven't made room for God in your everyday life yet. Now, let's see if I can do this without spilling. But do you notice when I... But, you know, I'm going to show you this part with, an, with another one that I'm not going to spill. Here's one that I did before. But do you notice when I tip this bottle, the line, <laughs> I can't find it, the line between you and God is tipping also because your life has ups and downs, good days and bad days, and God is staying right next to you through it all. God wants to have a relationship with each of us. We could even reach right up through that line and reach God. He is right there with us. Let's see what happens to that relationship when we add something new to our regular day. Now I have an Alka-Seltzer tablet here. Alka-Seltzer, and this is one of the reasons why you need your parents' permission and your parents' supervision. But this first piece of Alka-Seltzer is going to stand for fasting. Let's add some fasting to our relationship with God. What's happening? You can see that we're really getting very excited about having added fasting to our regular day. We are jumping right out of our regular day. We are really reacting to that place where God was faithfully and never ending touching our lives. Now we're also reaching up to God and loving God back. 
We are way out of our comfort zone when we add fasting, but look at what an exciting reaction, what an exciting relationship we are having with God. Now let's go back to Pastor Todd's sermon a couple of weeks ago, and let's add a little prayer. It goes a little prayer. And there it goes. We are really paying attention to God now. And here goes some scripture, the Bible story about Jesus in the desert, and Bible verse, verses from Matthew chapter 4. And you can see they are all helping our relationship with God. And you know, we are not trying to impress God by fasting. Even though our science projects, our science project was pretty impressive to watch. God loves it when he, we give him our attention. But even if we never fast a day in our lives, God still loves us completely. And he always will. Let's pray. Dear God, we are so thankful to be in a relationship with you. If we could, we would fill our hands with all the wonderful things you give us. Then we'd lift them up and give it all back to you. God, please show us if there is anything we could do without for you today to show you we love you. Help us to see someone who might need our help today. We ask in Jesus' name. We stand on Jesus' promise that we could find in the Bible and read ourselves. It says, if you ask anything in my name, Jesus promised, I will do it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.